Hello everybody, I'm Nick and in this video I'm going to show you how you can get a similar or even a better developer experience with what you would get if you were using c 11's Bang Bang Operator, which was removed by the way, it is not coming in c 11 for any version of c and .NET. We will be achieving that using a NuGet package called nullguard.4d and you know how it goes with any open source package that I show in this channel. If you think what you see is cool, there's a link in the description, go ahead and click that link, give the project a star on GitHub, it really means a lot to the people who work on the project. If you like the content and you want to see more, make sure you subscribe ring the notification bell and for more training check out nickchapsas.com so let me show you what problem we're trying to solve and what problem the bang bang operator would solve so i have a dotnet 6 project over here and i want to show you that i have nullable reference types turned off most people don't use this feature even though for new projects it is enabled by default I think people should be using it, but because it is optional and even when enabled, you have to make the warnings actively an error, it's not something that people follow. Plus, you have to make sure the library code you're using is also adhering to that, and it's just kind of hard to adopt at this point. But in any case, I'm going to show you both versions, and in this version, we're going to have it turned off. So I'm going to turn it off, and what the Bang Bang Operator feature of c 11, in case you didn't know, would allow you to do is do this on constructor or method parameters and what this would allow you to do is basically not have to write something like this if item repository is null then throw new argument null exception with the name of the uh, parameter now obviously this can be shorthanded in two ways first you can remove this and write argument null exception dot throw if null the object and also the name of parameter name so you can do that as well and that's a line of code uh, and you can also merge it to the assignment so you can say um, double question mark so if this is null throw a new null argument exception so all those are options you have however arguably the bang bang operator would make it very easy to just say that hey this should not be null coming in and if it is null throw an exception. However, we did have a solution to this problem for years, and that solution is in the form of a NuGet package. The NuGet package is called nullguard.4d, and it's part of the uh, .NET assembly weaving for the platform. So what this allows us to do is the moment I add it into the project, and remember, nullable reference uh, types are turned off. So if I go ahead and I build my project, first I'm going to get a file created over here, this is an XML defining that I have a weaver, an assembly weaver, and that is the null god weaver. And it also indicates that my reference to the NuGet package does not have a private assets all enabled. Maybe we're going to talk in another video what these instructions mean. Uh, for now, it doesn't really matter. All I want to do is just set it and remove it. And now what happens is that if I go ahead in the program.cs, and I say item service over here equals new um, item service and I pass down null as an item repository and say uh, right line um, then if I debug this project then the debugger as you can see stopped here and what happens when I execute is it says that null guard which is the package we're using repository is null so implicitly this thing cannot be null I didn't have to add bang bang, I didn't have to add an argument null exception. The NuGet package inspected my code and weaved the assembly after compilation to inject that check automatically. And it is, as you can see here, an argument null exception. I can also show you in the IL viewer where if I expand this over here, uh, and let's move up. You can see all the code related to null guard throwing when that property is null. So you don't have to manually check it. If it is not defined as allow nullable, it will throw. However, like I said, you can say allow null here, and that's a null guard uh, attribute. So if I go ahead and I debug now, this is working fine. It stepped over the code, didn't throw any exceptions because now the way the assembly was waived is the check is not there. So implicitly, any parameter cannot be null unless I specifically say that they can. And this is one of the three modes that null guard has. One is implicit, which is what you're seeing over here, the default. Um, if I have nullable reference types, then it works a bit differently. Um, if I go ahead over here and I enable it, 
and I say nullable reference types enable, um, and I go back here. Obviously, I'm getting the warning that you cannot convert this null literal to a non-nullable reference type, but that's just a warning. And you can end up with nulls because this is just a compilation check. It isn't a runtime check in reality. So this code, um, if I didn't have folded in here, let me just quickly turn it off. Um, this code over here, let me just build it and run it. I mean, it works. It didn't throw anything. I still pushed null in something that isn't marked as nullable. It will still accept it as a thing. So I want to go back and uncomment this and add forty back in and null god. And what I want to do now is mark this as nullable. So if this is nullable, which realistically in this example it shouldn't be, but for the sake of argument, if it is nullable, then I can pass null down and forty won't do anything. It will accept it. However, if it is not nullable and I pass null down, it will now throw an exception, as you can see. So in this case, I didn't have to say allow null. My allow null is if I have the question mark and make this nullable and the project knows it automatically and marks it a certain way. But if I don't have it, then the check will be inserted. So you have implicit mode and nullable reference type mode. There's also a third one called explicit, and that is driven by, let me just go ahead and disable that again. That is driven by a very popular NuGet package that JetBrains, um, the creators of Rider, um, created, and that is called the JetBrains.annotations. And they had this package for years because they were using it in Resharper uh, in their own code. And what this allows you to do is say, not null coming from that package. And if I do that, then explicitly 4D will detect that and add the not null check here. So this mode is enabled if you add that NuGet package and you have not null anywhere in the project. And this does not stop there. By the way, my personal preference, because I am using nullable reference types, is to just use the nullable reference uh, types approach and not have to use the attributes. But if you're in a previous version and you're not using nullable reference types, this can be really useful, actually. Um, and if you have a method, and let's say that this returns a public string, I don't know, test, and that string is null because strings are nullable objects. If this was nullable and I go to the IL viewer after I build, then as you can see, not much there, just a regular null return here. But if this was not nullable, and I build it again, then you can see that null god, even on the return value, if it is null, it will throw an exception because this cannot be null by the intention of the developer. So it will actually throw an appropriate exception to handle that. And I think in this case, it is an invalid operation exception, not an argument null exception. So it's a very well thought out library. I highly recommend you go and give it a star and support the library and the creator. I should point out at this point that this library and the whole 40 project has a special license where you have to contribute to the project if you want to use it. And you can learn more about that over here. So there's a dedicated page that explains how you can become a Patreon on Open Collective, like all these people and support the project. And this is part of the license. It's an FAQ you might want to take a look. And even though this is an honesty system without any legal enforcement or any code checks to check if you actually paid or whatever. If you want these people to keep working on projects cool like this, I highly recommend you support them. Well, that's all I had for you for this video. Thank you very much for watching. Special thanks to my Patreons for making the videos possible. If you want to support me as well, you can find the link in the description down below. Leave a like if you like this video, subscribe for more, click the like this and ring the bell as well. And I'll see you in the next video. Keep coding.